Okay, so we have the accounts here for the Garcia Flauta House, and we have the assets listed here. Notice that they have a debit balance with the exception of accumulated depreciation. It has a credit balance. It is considered to be a contra asset account. We have accounts payable, capital, drawing, revenue, expenses, and then we have income summary. Income summary is an account that we're going to use during the closing process, and that is generally the only time you're ever going to see that particular account. We are also only going to close what we consider to be temporary accounts. Expenses are temporary accounts. Revenue is a temporary account. Drawing is a temporary account. And the income summary is also a temporary account. Again, we only use income summary during the closing process. Okay, so to start off the closing entries, we're only going to have four. Some of them are going to be what we consider to be compound entries. It's going to include more than two accounts, and some of them are only just going to be our normal closing entries. So on December 31st, 2015, we're going to close the revenue account to the income summary account. So Revenue has a normal credit balance, and to close it, I'm going to need to debit this account to bring it to a zero. So on 1231, I am going to debit revenue for 16550 and then I'm going to credit the income summary for 16550 In essence, what I'm doing is transferring the revenue credit balance over to the income summary account. So we're going to credit income summary for $16,550. We're going to post this first closing entry to the revenue and to the income summary account. Remember, again, revenue closing the income summary is basically transferring the credit balance to revenue over to the income summary account. So on 1231, we had a closing entry, and we debited revenue for 16550 bringing this account to a zero balance. We're then going to come down here to the income summary account, and on 1231, we had a closing entry. And we credited this account for 16550 and now it has a $16,550 balance in the credit account. Again, we closed revenue to income summary, transferring the balance over to the income summary account. The next account that we need to close are all the expense accounts. Again, this is going to be a compound entry because we're going to close all expense accounts in the same closing entry. So on 1231, we're going to close the expense accounts. And expense accounts have a debit balance. So to close them, we're going to need to credit these accounts. And we're going to close them to the income summary. So we're going to debit income summary for the total amount of the expenses. So if we take a moment and we add these up, we've got rent expense for $3,500, wages expense for $6,550, utilities expense of $850, and depreciation of $2,500. That brings us to a total expense account of $13,400. Okay, so we're going to debit income summary for $13,400, and we're going to credit all of the rent, all the expense accounts. So we're going to credit rent expense The rent expense had a debit balance of $3,500, and to close it, I'm going to need to credit that account for $3,500. We've got wages expense. Had a 
has a debit balance of $6,550. And to close it, I'm going to need to credit this account for $6,550. We've got utilities expense has a debit balance of $850. And to close it, I'm going to need to credit this account for $850. And then we have depreciation expense that has a debit balance of $2,500. And to close it, I need to credit this account for $2,500. All right, so that is now my second closing entry. What we've done is we have closed the expense accounts and we're transferring those debit balances over to the income summary account. So let's go ahead and post this closing entry to the ledgers. So on 12-31, had a closing entry, debit of 13400 <clears throat> which is now going to bring my balance in the income summary account down to 3150 And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to post these journal entries here for the, room ex or the expense accounts over to the expense ledgers. So on 1231, we got closing, and we credited this account for 3500 bringing the balance to zero. Right. Wages expense had a credit of six thousand five fifty, and now has a zero balance. Utilities we credited for eight fifty, and now has a zero balance. And depreciation expense was the last one, and we credited this account. For 2500 bringing the balance to zero. So again, really all we've done is we have taken these debit balances, added them together, and transferred them over to the income summary account, leaving the expense accounts with a zero balance. So we've closed revenue, we've closed the expense accounts, and we brought them over here to income summary. Now, the difference between the closing of the revenue and the closing of the expense accounts is what we consider to be our net income or our net loss. Now, we have a net income of 3150 And how do I know this? Well, I have revenue of 16550 I had total expenses of 13400 and the difference is 3150 So that equals my net income. I can verify this on the income statement. So when you're doing your closing entries, go back and look at your income statement because whatever you get between the difference of the closing of the revenues and the expenses should be reflected as either the net income or net loss on your income statement or your profit and loss. All right. We have two more accounts that we need to close and now we're going to close the income summary. Income summary is going to be closed to the capital account. We are not closing capital. Okay, All we're doing is we are transferring the balance from income summary over to the capital account. So on 12-31 we are going to debit income summary for $3,150. If it has a credit balance of $3,150, I want to debit it for $3,150 to bring it to a zero. And then I'm going to credit the capital account for $3,150. 
So at this point, what I've done is I've journalized the closing of the income summary account. Now let's post. Go on 1231. Got a closing entry. And we debited this account for $3,150, bringing this account balance to zero. We credited capital for $3,150. And now we need to add. We have a credit balance of $34,600. I'm going to add $3,150. And that is going to bring me to $37,750. That's my capital balance right now. I have one more account that I need to close, and that's the drawing account. Drawing has a debit balance, so to close it, I need to credit this account. So on 1231, I'm going to debit capital. for $2,000 and I'm going to credit the drawing account for $2,000. Okay, so let's post these to the ledgers. We go up here to capital, 1231. We got that closing entry. We debited this account for 2000 And now we have to subtract from the $37,750 balance, take away 2000 That leaves us with a capital balance of 35750 35750 I'm going to circle that because that's my ending capital balance. I can verify this ending capital balance on the statement of owner's equity, as well as on the balance sheet. So when I look at the balance sheet, that is the capital that should be reflected on the balance sheet, 35750 If that is not what you have, you need to go back because you have an adding problem or journal entry wasn't closed correctly or something of that nature. Okay, so we have now closed all temporary accounts. We have closed the revenue account, the expense account, we've closed income summary, and we've now closed the drawing account, and we have an ending capital balance of 35750 So what we're going to do now is we're going to create the post-closing trial balance. The post-closing trial balance only has permanent accounts listed. Assets, liabilities, capital. That's it. Nothing else. All right. So let's just go down the road, list in our permanent accounts in the correct columns, and we want to determine if our debit and our credits equal each other. So we have a cash debit balance of 10500 we have an accounts receivable debit balance of $2,500. Land has a debit balance of $20,000. Equipment has a debit balance of $6,500. Accumulated depreciation has a credit balance of $2,500. Accounts payable has a credit balance of $1,250. And capital had an ending balance of $35,750. All right. So let's add these columns together to determine if we have closed these accounts and correctly and our debits and our credits equal. So $10,500 plus $2,500 plus $20,000 plus $6,500 gives me $39,000. $500 in debits and 
plus 35,750 gives me $39,500 in credits. And this proves to me that within about a 99% accuracy rate, I have closed the accounts correctly and everything is balanced. There is that 1% of an error rate and that could be maybe you posted something to the wrong expense account that's not going to affect the closing balances that's not going to affect how we do the closing entries and it's not going to affect the post closing trial balance as far as being out of balance it just means that you have an expense account that would be close to or posted to the wrong expense account that would have to be determined through a brief audit of the account this sums up the closing process.